All right, I'm back. We're still on page 313. We're going to do this last problem, and it says to find the extreme values on the given interval. This is a candidate's test problem. So the candidate's test um, says if a function is continuous on a closed interval, then it has its absolute maximum or minimum, an endpoint or a critical point. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to look at the endpoints and the critical points. The issue with this function is what are the critical points, and like how much effort do we want to put into finding them? So like. I actually know that the critical points are gonna be at x equals negative two, x equals three. But I think we should probably put in a little extra effort on this one because I don't know the last time that you did this. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rewrite this as a piecewise function. And it's kind of a little bit of work, but it's not really the end of the world. Um, all right, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a number line or a sign chart for x plus two and for x minus three. So here we go. So for x plus two, uh, so here's the, the key with these number lines is that you have to make them so that they like line up with each other. So this will be for x plus two. And then I'm gonna do another one for x minus three. Okay, so x plus two is negative to the left and then positive. So you wanna do a lot of pluses so that on uh, corresponding regions, you'll be able to see like what's going on. And then here, negative, and then becomes positive. Okay, so why is this important? Well, uh, when x plus two is negative, the absolute value of x plus two is the opposite of x plus two. So here I'll be using the opposite of x plus two for the absolute value. And then here I'll be using x plus two, and here I'll be using x plus two. So why am I writing it twice? I'm writing it twice because one of them is between negative two and three, and the other one is from three to infinity. And I wanna be really explicit so that I know what I'm looking for. And then here, uh, this will be the opposite of x minus three. This will be the opposite of x minus three. And then it'll be x minus three. Okay, so now I wanna combine these into uh, my actual function, right? So I'm gonna be doing on this part right here, from negative infinity to negative two. So where is that? Uh, so I have like this, this region, I have this region, and then like I have that other region to the right. Um, all right, so what do we got? We have two, so it's gonna be negative. So I'm gonna say that's negative x minus two. So it's negative two x minus four and then negative three times negative quantity x minus three is positive three times that, so it's gonna be plus three. Uh, what am I doing? This is hard. All right, let me, let, me, let me do a better job on this. All right, so it's gonna be two times negative x minus two, and then minus three times, uh, I'm gonna say three minus x, and then there's just a minus 2x for whatever reason, minus 2x. Okay, let's combine that. So negative 2x plus 3x is x minus 2x gives me negative x. And then negative 4 minus 9, negative 13. Okay, negative x minus 13 on that interval. How much space do I have? Oh, I have a good amount of space. Okay, so then the next one, let me continue my, my divisions here my partitions, I guess, not really divisions, I don't know. Okay, so it's gonna be two times x plus two. So two times x plus two, just two x plus four, could have done it. Uh, then it's negative three times three minus x. And then I'm just gonna subtract another two x because I'm supposed to. Okay, so that's two x plus three x is five x. And then minus 2x is back to 3x. So 3x, 4 minus 9 is negative 5. So just minus 5. Now at x equals negative 2, these should give you the same value. So let's see if they do. So here it would be 2 minus 13 is negative 11. Here would be negative 6 minus 5, negative 11. So it's looking good. So we have continuity there. And then here, uh, this one's a little easier, potentially. Also, potentially not. Two times x plus two, and then minus three times x minus three, and then just subtract two x because the function tells you to. Okay, two x minus three x is negative x minus two x 
is, uh, what did I say? Two, <laughs> two x minus three x is negative x minus two x, negative three x. Okay, and then uh, four plus nine is 13, plus 13. Okay, do these give me the same thing? At three, I would get nine minus five is four. I would get uh, negative nine plus 13 is four. Okay, so nine, nine, nine minus five is definitely four, and negative nine plus 13 is four. Yeah, I don't know why that weird me out. Okay, so I think this is good, which means I can rewrite f of x. That was like my whole goal here. So f of x is actually uh, negative x minus 13 when x is less than or equal to negative 2. It's 3x minus 5 when x is negative 2. This is not going to fit. Uh, let me move this. Okay, where should we put you? Let's put it down here. Okay, that's a pretty good place. Um, and then this is this is gross because I was trying to cram it in there. So negative two to three, negative two to three, and then it was negative three x plus thirteen. Negative three x plus thirteen from for x greater than or equal to three. Let's say. Okay. Whew. So that's just rewriting it as a piecewise function. Which, by the way. We didn't need to do. We knew the critical points were going to be at all the turning points of the absolute value things. So like from step one, we knew that negative two and three were going to be critical points. But whatever, you do what you do. Uh, all right, so from here I can find f prime. So f prime of x is going to be negative one. This is one of those things. So we don't include the negative two because we don't know if it's differentiable at negative two. And we can fill it in, we can like backfill it if it turns out that it is differentiable. But uh, these are all linear, so the slopes are just, you know, the slopes of the lines. And so you can actually see this thing is definitely not differentiable at negative two or three. So long way to go. Uh, so critical points, x equals negative two x equals negative three because f prime of x does not exist uh, there. Okay, so weird critical points, right? The ones where the derivative doesn't exist are like the weirdest ones. And that's what we've gotten here. So uh, did I even set up the candidate says? Oh God, where am I gonna cram all this? All right, we'll do, we'll do uh, like, let's do the table. And then we'll, uh, I don't even know, we'll write it somewhere, x, f of x. All right, so we have to consider the endpoints, which are negative four and nine. That's super fortunate. Uh, so negative four, and then we got negative two, three, and nine. And then we need to fill in the values of the function. Uh, this, I'm gonna use a calculator, right? So what the, don't be a hero, you know? Let's, let's switch it up, let's use a calculator. Let's see if we got our piecewise function right. Um, so I'm gonna go change this over to, so uh, what should I do? I'm gonna add a new problem and then add a calculator page. I'm gonna say f of x is uh, two, absolute value is a template for you, but it's faster for me to type that, minus three, absolute value, x minus three, and then minus two x, okay. Uh, I'm going to define g of x to be the piecewise version that I wrote, and we'll see if it's right. If it's not right, I'll probably scrap this whole video and do it over again so I look like a genius and got it right the first time. But, you know, uh, movie magic. Negative x minus 13 for x. Less than or equal to is a template for you, but again, just faster for me to type it. Um, 3x minus 5 when negative 2x and 3, and then uh, negative 3x plus 13, I could easily imagine me getting this wrong. Uh, I was a little shaky there when we were like putting it all together. So let's see, um, how about a graph? Let's add a graph. And I'm gonna graph f of x. Okay, I've, it's possible that I got it right because there's a very negative slope on that right hand. And that was like the thing I was most nervous about because it was like, yes. Okay, so we nailed it. 
So you can, you can definitely see on this graph um, that the critical points are certainly relative maximums and minimums. Um, and then the endpoints we have to consider. So let's use the calculator to figure out the values. So f of negative four, and you just fill them in on the notes, uh, f of negative two, f of three, f of nine. Okay, so negative nine, negative 11, and then I'll go back to the notes and I will correctly write up my, my summary. Okay, so we got all that. Good deal. Uh, let's go, let's see what the calculator says. Uh, so how am I gonna, I'm never gonna be able to, well, let's see what it just says for the derivative. So uh, derivative, I was gonna, I'm like thinking, how do I get it to tell me where the derivative fails to exist? Uh, derivative of f of x, ooh, the S-I-G-N sign function has shown up. Let me, let me define that as f3 of x. Um, and let's look at the graph of that. Let's put the graph of that on here with the, with the other graphs. Okay, so what's this telling us? So uh, this is telling us that the slope of this graph is negative whatever, negative, uh, negative one, until we get to here, which is negative two, x equals negative two, the slope instantaneously switches from negative one, as indicated by this branch of the graph, to positive three, um, as indicated by this part of the graph. And then at x equals three, it instantaneously changes again. There's no smooth transition, which is why the derivative fails to exist. It instantaneously, the derivative instantaneously changes from three to negative three, which is why the derivative doesn't exist there. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, the SIGN function, if you've never run into it before, literally returns, uh, so like negative five is negative, it's gonna return negative one. SIGN of 12, 12 is positive, it's gonna return positive one. It's kind of a weird function. There was a while where SIGN of zero would return plus or minus one. Oh yes, I think that's really cool. Uh, what does it mean? Like nothing, uh, it's like a weird, Thing. I feel like the, the sign of zero just should not exist. Like, I think it should have said undefined, um, but I don't know how you make that choice as a programmer. Uh, all right, so let's go back. And I feel like coincidentally, some programmer is gonna watch this and have a long-winded explanation of why that happened. And that's good, because I'd like to know. All right, I'm gonna write up a solution here and use a different color and I'm gonna really cram it into this space. So I'm gonna say f of x is continuous. Therefore, by candidates test, candidates test, absolute max min at end point or critical point. Therefore, absolute min is negative 14 at x equals nine. And whew, just gonna fit it, absolute max is four at x equals three. So this is another example where one of them occurred at an endpoint, one of them occurred at a critical point. It could be that both of them are at critical points, both of them are at endpoints. We just don't know, that's why we like go through the process. Um, so you're always gonna start off by saying the function is continuous, Therefore, by the candidates test, the absolute max or the absolute min or whatever you're looking for occurs at an endpoint or a critical point. Then you go hunting for your critical points, find those. Remember, it's where the derivative is zero or doesn't exist. Um, you make your table of values, and then in the table of values, the biggest y value that you see is the absolute max, the smallest y value that you see is the absolute min. That's all there is to it. It's like, uh, it's a very straightforward thing. It's built on tons of important knowledge that you got to carry with you. But once you've got that knowledge built up, you can just kind of use it. So I'm going to stop this here. I'll be back in another video to do even more stuff. So I will see you then.